thank you so much, Power Her New York, for including Latina Surge um, and our Latina Latinx perspective. Um, I just want to give a little shout out to our Vice President, Estela Rizzuto, who's participating today. And we have a uh, regional reach here. It's not just New York, but New Jersey and, and other surrounding states. Uh, Dr. Katia Goldfarb is also participating and she heads up the multi multicultural uh, Latinx affairs for Montclair State University. So I'm excited that all of this rich information that we're all sharing today is, is going, you know, obviously disseminated through New York, but also our surrounding states. Um, so, you know, obviously we want to uh, emphasize that we should all be talking about equal pay with everyone. Awareness is key on this issue. It's still staggering and sometimes shocking to know that there are still women and women of color who are unaware of the pay gap. So uh, I, I really commend all of the women here today in their efforts to uh, create awareness and outreach on this issue because the first step is awareness. Um, and at that point, we can then move forward and, and address uh, being proactive through negotiation, uh, training, and, and, and things like that. Um, collective responsibility is something that Latina Surge emphasizes over and over again. Um, we need to know the, the data out there. We need to know it uh, on supplier diversity, uh, on, on performance uh, for different corporations, um, and we can then only self-empower knowing that data and uh, utilizing it via purchasing power. Uh, we shouldn't be leaving, you know, there's, there's multiple reports annually that are published uh, by like Nielsen, Catalyst, uh, McKinsey, Acer, there's numerous reports every year and we talk, we discuss equal pay every year, but we as women tend to let those, let, let those reports sit on the shelf for the rest of the year and collect us. We really need to utilize that data, talk about that data, share the data, and act upon the data. Um, it's 2020. For, for us as Latinas in a Latinx community, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine that there's still close to a 50% differential in pay. We're doing everything we can to address this. Um, and this status quo over the you know, year to year uh, throughout the decade has really um, helped to um, support the momentum towards self self-employment employment and also entrepreneurship. Um, Latinx businesses now, given the circumstance, are even at greater risk. So Latino women in general have taken that extra step to leave corporate America because they weren't finding their way to equal pay or to wealth generation and they decided to self-empower and move into, uh, into entrepreneurial endeavors. And now this is a big risk to our community and something that we really feel that is critical to address. Um, and there are a lot of different programs out there now that we're seeing on loans and bailouts, um, grant programs that are being offered at the state level and at the federal level. But we really need to know whether these are realistic and these are accessible by our professional community. Um, I guess, uh, you know, when we talk about our current reality, there are some positive impacts. Those include innovation. There will certainly be innovative growth. Uh, clearly, communications have been outstanding to date, I would think, uh, given, given, you know, where we are today versus where we are maybe at the last catastrophe of 9-11. Uh, negative impacts, of course, you know, layoffs. I'd love to know who's getting laid off and who's tracking this. I think that it, the, the, the onus is on government to see which individuals are um, filing for um, unemployment and seeing what those trends are, how many people are uh, women, how many people are women of color filing. We need to definitely track that and see what's, what's, what the trends are here. 
um, ask for students, uh, you know, what's the loan assistant profile looking like now? Internships are being canceled. How does that affect work study programs and financial aid? Um, and, you know, who, who's also getting these grants? Who's getting these loans? We need to find out who's actually getting access to them and tracking that. And then, uh, you know, in terms of those who are staying in corporate America, uh, obviously there are layoffs, but there are definitely going to be people who are going to get promoted because they're taking on more uh, responsibility as layoffs occur. Uh, who are those people that are being uh, identified for those promotions? And, you know, what's the profile in terms of how many women are being included and in women of color to that end? So ultimately, I would say that, uh, from our perspective, there, there definitely needs to be some kind of action plan. We would recommend a three-point action plan to be implemented, uh, addressing who's getting laid off, obviously by tracking the data, um, and who's being promoted. Number two, supplier diversity pipeline. Right now, there's so many emergency contracts that are, are, are kicked into full gear. Um, how many are MWBEs? How many are participating? Um, you know, how is government and corporate America ensuring this participation? I haven't heard anything from any governors. Obviously, we're 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 focused right now on on critical communication on healthcare, but also there should there should definitely be some communication along with these loans and grant programs as to what the participation is and what the what the uh, emphasis is here for main contractors to to utilize uh, subs that are MWBEs. Um, and then third, uh, the lo land and, uh, loan and grant aid. Uh, how are the federal government and the states going to ensure coverage for women in home-based businesses? This is a critical component that Latina Surge is now advocating for. Uh, in the last five years, mm -hmm. with technology advancing exponentially, so many women have gone into their own businesses and have home-based businesses, but none of these apply to the loans and grants that are currently offered. So how does that again create a disparity for our, our um, community of women and women of color? That's a really so, interesting point, Elisa. That's a really interesting point. So Did I think that these are the critical issues and it's time to close this, this, this pay gap, uh, especially as it relates to what's happening today.